All right, hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're using tile sets to make our room look a bit better. So let's uh, jump right in. Okay, so today we're gonna be taking a look at tile sets. Now to make the tile sets, it's actually pretty easy. And we're gonna start by making some sprites for our tiles and then we will turn them into actual tile set objects and then we'll put them in the room itself. So to start out, going to the sprites here, I'm gonna add a new group. So I'm gonna right click, choose add group and I'm gonna call this tile sets. And underneath tile sets, I'm gonna create a new sprite and I'm gonna call this SPR underscore uh, background. And this is gonna be the sprite that I'm gonna use for the background behind the gems. So from here, I'm going to import an image. And the image I'm going to import is here. Uh, it's this one. And I'll put a link in the description to both the open game art post for these and the uh, itch.io post for these. So you guys can download these from either of those two places or if you have your own sprites you wanna use, that's fine too. I'm gonna make another sprite here for the foreground. So I'm gonna call this um, SPR foreground and I'll import a sprite for this yes and one more great sprites SPR underscore uh, I'm gonna call this frame and this is gonna be for the frame that's gonna go around the character portraits and the spells and also around the um, pieces themselves all right now I've got all those put in here, so I'm just gonna turn these off. Now I made these 18 by 18, which is kind of breaking one of the rules of pixel art. It should always be powers of two. I made them 18 by 18 because my gems are 16 by 16, and by making the tiles for the actual room a little bit larger, it makes them look a little bit better. And 18 is still something that can kind of sort of divide pretty well, so hopefully it's not too bad. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click on my tile sets. I'm going to create a new tile set. I'm going to call this TS underscore oops, uh, background. And I'm going to select a new sprite from tile sets and the background sprite. Now, because I made these 18 by 18, GameMaker doesn't know quite what to do with it right away. So I just have to go up here and change the tile width to 18 and tile height to 18 and then it'll frame the background just right. I'm gonna make another tile set for the foreground. This is gonna be TS underscore foreground. Um, choose the foreground sprite here. And again, width and height are gonna be 18 by 18. Now when you're using a tile set for Game Maker Studio, uh, you might have noticed this already. If we go back to the sprites, I'll show you. Your first space so like this part right here, um, if you have more than just two things, it should be the upper left corner. Always needs to be either magenta or transparent because Game Maker Studio will not use that, which is why you start to see this one right away. And the last tile set I'm gonna use is gonna be the frame. So create tile set, select sprite, tile sets, frame, and I'm gonna rename this TS underscore frame. And same thing with the height are 18 and 18. And you can see this better here. If I zoom in, if you wanna zoom in and out on here, if you put your mouse over it and uh, hold down control while using your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. If you just use the mouse wheel, you'll just go up and down. But you can see that it disregards the upper left corner. And so that's why some tile sets will have a magenta square or just a transparent square there. It's because uh, Game Maker Studio will ignore that part. All right, so I've got my tile sets all set up. Now I'm gonna go into my room, my test room, and I'm gonna change this a little bit here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new layer for my background. And I'm gonna put this uh, beneath everything so stuff that's on top will appear on top of stuff that's below it. And I want this to be my background. So I'm going to rename the layer. 
I'm going to call this background. Oh, needs to be unique. So we'll rename layer and I'll call it TS background. Uh, and for the tile set, I'll grab the background tile set. And then over here, you can see the tiles appear. And again, I can use control on the mouse to zoom in. So I'm just going to grab that and do, 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 do. Oh, this needs to be above that black background to be able to see it. And I can just paint the entire room with these. Uh, narrow, narrow. And the room fits kind of outside of this. Um, we'll fix that in just a moment. But you can see that because the gem is on the foreground layer, or not the foreground, but on a layer that's above the background, uh, the background tiles aren't painting over what that where that gem was. All right, so there's that. Now, what I want to do is I want to have the middle nine of these tiles be the background and then also some other places. So I'm going to go create another tile set here, another tile layer, and I'm going to rename this to be uh, TS4 ground. And I'm going to grab a tile set for this. It's the foreground and I'll grab that tile. And now I want this to go kind of all the way around here. So I'm just going to frame this out. I'm looking for something similar to Puzzle Quest, like I said. So I'm going to want player character here. And then like the player character spells down here. And same thing, I want the enemy over here. And the enemy's spells down here. And then, let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'm going to free up one more space on each side. And actually, I think I'm going to... No, that actually looks not too bad. All right, now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my instances layer is beneath the foreground because I want it to appear like it's on a farther back layer. I'm going to create another tile set layer and I'm going to call this TS underscore frame and I'll grab a tile set of the frame. And now this has different pieces to it. So we got these corners and these edges. So I'm just going to grab these corners here. I want this to go above the foreground and I'm going to put this everywhere where I would want a corner to the frame. And then same thing with the right corner. And bottom left. And bottom right. And now I'm going to use the bottom piece. And here and here. Let's use the left side. Okay, and over here up here. Let's go right. And this is starting to look more like an actual thing here. So right and then let's do the top side. Right there, right there, right there, and right there. Alright, now our room isn't quite the right size and that's because I didn't take into account that I wanted my tiles here to be uh, 18 by 18 when I made it. So um, we're going to go to our room properties a little bit here. And I want this to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, plus nine is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I want it to be 19 tiles wide and 18 tiles tall. So that's going to be should be, I think, 344, 342, 342. Um, same thing with the camera, I need to change now. Viewport 0, 342. And then the height, I want to be, let's see, 
11 times 16 is, well, it's more than 11. Oh, then I forgot to do something too here. I just now noticed, right there. Some of you are probably screaming at me about that. Um, all right, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven times sixteen is it's one seventy-six. Hmm, this isn't that though. Oh, eleven times eighteen. That's why. One ninety-eight. And then we'll make the room's height one ninety-eight as well. Alright, cool. So there we go. Uh, now, the one thing I want to do is I want my pieces to fit a little bit better in the frame. And the main problem with there, if I go to my instances layer so I can change my objects around, is currently this object is placing itself based on its upper left-hand corner. And I want it to place itself based on its center. So if I go take a look at my gem sprites, and I'm going to need to do this for all of them. I want to change the center to middle center. I want to do the same thing for all of them. So this will just take a moment here. Middle center, middle center, middle center, and last but not least, middle center. All right. So now, if I go back in here, you see that it's already changed. Um, so that it's, hmm, that's weird. Okay, do I have my room set right? Nope, I don't, that's why. So I'm gonna set the grid on my room to be 18 by 18. There we go. And now I'll be able to fit eight wide and eight tall. And I'll have my player over here, player spells here, enemy here, enemy spells here. So this looks more like a proper puzzle quest game. So there we go. Uh, we use tile sets to set up the room. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to use a script and what's called a two dimensional array to fill the board. Um, and then after we do that, we can start looking at our match finding algorithm. So. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. Tons of really cool people there, especially some that know more about Game Maker than I do. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.